And now it's time for Photo Booth Live Chat with John Young. Welcome to Monday Night here on PBN TV. I'm John Young, your host, and tonight we're going to be talking Photo Booth Expo coming up here with Catalina Block. Good evening, Catalina. Hi, John. How are you? I am doing well. Thanks for coming on tonight and being with us. I'm super excited to chat with you. This is, this is going to be fun. We are broadcasting to about 12 different locations tonight on Facebook and, and YouTube and such. You guys can join and join us tonight. And if you have any questions or anything that you would like, you know, comments or anything, you can in the live chat. Just put your, your things there and it should pop over to my computer here so I can see everything that's going on, we think. Technology is great and it's supposed to basically catch everything and harvest all of those chats and put it right there. Sometimes. So, um, Catalina, so coming up in February, you're going to be at Photo Booth Expo uh, and speaking this year. And I wanted to kind of give people out there who are, are going to be, you know, kind of maybe thinking about coming out there, you know, what will I get out of it? I really wanted to kind of dig into that. And for those of you who are interested in going, uh, in the description below is the link and the, um, the code, the discount code. Those will get you the cheapest passes before Halloween. After Halloween, once the jack-o'-lanterns are, are decaying in the street, it's all over. You got to pay a higher rate. So go jump out there and check those and, and such. But Catalina, uh, let's kind of go through. Um, it looks according to the schedule, you'll be speaking both Monday and Tuesday afternoon. So let's. Wh what are you going to be covering for the uh, crowd this year? Uh, I have two chats that I'm going to be doing. And uh, if anyone who's ever attended one of my uh, talks, before you know I like to give out tons of information very useful information things that you can apply right away uh, generally I give a lot of freebies as well things that you can download and tangible people like tangibles I know I always did when I you know went to chats I hate people who just kind of like say a bunch of words that mean nothing so uh, I like to be able to you know hear back from people afterwards to make sure that stuff actually was informative for them and they could apply it um, my first talk is one I did actually last year and it's about how to close the corporate clients and how it is that I do it. So I actually will talk about where to find them, how to talk to them, because corporate clients do not speak, you know, general population English, just almost another language completely. <laughs> and uh, if you don't know how to say the right words, you're going to lose these clients. But I'm also going to be um, showing the proposals that I do. And this is exactly how I present all of my uh, quotes to my commercial clients and to my corporate clients. And so that is something that I'm going to be going through. And then the other one is one I'm really excited about, and I'm going to be doing it with Lexine from Lexi Booth, who is another photo booth company here in Ottawa. I am located in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, and it's about how to build community with your competition. You know, a lot of people are all about oh, competition, this, that, and the other thing that are the enemy. They're not, you know, mm -hmm. like I talk to the majority of the photo booth owners in my area and, you know, we are always helping each other out and, and building each other up. And I think that's, you know, one of the big reasons why we're all so successful in such a small city. So I'm really excited to do both of these talks this year. So let's, let's start with the corporate. Um, we're going to be talking and digging into that a little bit. Uh, corporate can range from small to large events. Are you going to be focusing on one side of the demographic or the other or wh how, which direction are you going to take with that? Uh, it's going to be a bit more of a, a general approach just because with corporations, uh, it's more about understanding how they're structured on the back end. I came from 14 years of being in the corporate world and understanding all that red tape. And so I just kind of de demystifying, you know, how these things can can work and, and who you need to be talking to and what language you need to be using. And this can be applied to smaller 
uh, you know, little photo booth rentals that are maybe just a couple of hours long to long term installations or even like really big brand activations. It doesn't really matter how big or small the event is. Uh, just understanding how to communicate it to them is the biggest hurdle with any corporate client. Certainly it is. And from my own personal experience, I can attest to <laughs> uh, the valuable information, certainly when that comes to that. Um, so, so okay, we're going to talk about that. And then the second one you're going to be doing with, oh, shoot, I forgot her name. I didn't. Lexine Menard. Lexine. Lexine. Yeah. Um, what was the, the, the impetus or what, what kind of made that topic really, uh, really speak to you to want to deliver that? Uh, well, I mean, I just I see so much in all the Facebook groups. I'm very active in all the Facebook groups, right? Um, I'm part of the photo booth supply code community. And one of the things that I love so much about their community was just how tight knit everyone is, despite being in the same cities, or at least close by, you know, in that group, it's almost like, oh, you own a photo booth supply code booth. And that person's almost like your instant family because you guys have the same photo booth, right? You, you, you've already made that connection. Um, and I love that about the community. And then when I started seeing more owners in my city and in surrounding areas that had those photo booths, you know, and I feel like, I don't know if, uh, I guess here's a little bit different. We've never really had that community with, with businesses. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so I just wanted to reach out to them and, build that relationship and when one owner actually reached out to me first and I, I was really happy because a lot of times you know i'll introduce myself to someone in the area and it's almost like standoffish right because they're right. like oh this person's my competition you know i've had people block me in the past because <laughs> they don't want uh, they don't want to talk to me. Actually, the only bad review I have on Google is from another owner in this city. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, yeah, they, unfortunately. Yeah, they don't all love me. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> but, you know, uh, the owners that I, I do know, like, we just had our five-year anniversary party, and uh, there was Lexine who came. She runs Lexi Booth here. And then we had uh, Muna who came who runs Wish Photo Booth. You know, both are extremely profitable and very well-known photo booth companies in the city. And it was just so nice to have them come out. And, you know, we, we talk about, like, inside stuff and trends and help each other out with events. And quite frankly, there's a lot of times where, you know, they've saved my butt. You know, I don't have a photo booth or I had a photo booth go down. I don't have an extra one. And, you know, I've driven to Muna's house at like nine o'clock at night to <laughs> pick up a photo booth before. And, and same with her. Like sometimes she needs a booth and she doesn't have enough. And I'm more than happy to help. And, um, you know, I think that's one of the big things that's missing in a lot of people's minds is that they they should be building these relationships with people. Right. Yes, certainly. You can help them. They can help you. And it, it's not competition. There's more than enough business out there for everyone. We've never come across um, like a client where we've been bidding against hmm. uh, to that extent, you know, so because we have such unique business models. And I think that's what's really important, too, that I do want to stress to people is, you know, finding your niche because there's a lot of business out there and everyone has their strengths. There's no such thing as like one company that can do everything. So, you know, making sure that you know where your lane is, I guess. Yeah, certainly. <laughs> um, it's very important. And, and I think that's one of the reasons why uh, we've all been so successful. We, we know our lane, like we know what we're really good at and we kind of stick to that and we've been able to build each other up that way. So in that situation, when you have someone call and you're thinking to yourself, you know, I could possibly do this or an adequate job, what have you, but like seeing this is more of her lane as you, as you use, is that something that happens now after you've built those relationships? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I'll either, um, CC her on an email and saying like, Hey, I want to introduce you to so-and-so like this is my colleague, you know, right. you guys would be a better fit or something like that. Um, or I might just send her a Facebook message and say, here's their contact information, you know, and, and that works with not just them, obviously, but people in surrounding cities too, you know, like Montreal is a city that's only about two hours away from me. Um, we do quite a bit of work in Montreal, but there's sometimes there's events that, you know, I, I know for the client, it's not going to be worth it for them to, to have us go out there for that specific service that they're looking to do. So I'll refer them to someone who I trust out there to do that job. In which case, again, I'll do the email introduction and and send them the information as well. So that it's it's a clean handoff, right? It's sure. not like I just dropped them and didn't respond or anything like that. <laughs> Catalina, you mentioned the word trust, that there's people out there, or these other companies that you trust. Obviously, there's going to be the companies on the other side of the coin that you would not trust to send someone to. What? How do you build that relationship to be able to know that you can indeed trust these companies? 
Um, I mean, I think a lot of it just has to do with being able to see like how they operate, right? Hmm. Like the, the companies that I know in my city, I've experienced them firsthand. You know, I, I know the owners, I've interacted with the owners. Um, maybe they've white labeled for me in the past or vice versa. But, you know, you build that relationship with someone the first time you kind of you meet them, you get a pretty good gut feeling about who they are. And nine times out of 10, my gut's pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, but contracts are also very important, especially like with white labeling, you know, laying out everything. Uh, I've found regardless of, you know, who that person is, it's important to to tell people and be very transparent about what your expectations are. And if they can fulfill those expectations, you know, perfectly, then great. I will trust you, <laughs> you know, sure. like and reviews, obviously um, the wedding industry and, and event industry in our city is very small. So people talk, you know, you know, who doesn't show up to jobs, you know, who, who doesn't present themselves well and who isn't professional. Um, so you kind of just stay away from those. And it's not that I wouldn't talk to a person who I don't particularly find professional. I just won't send them business and sure. probably wouldn't ask them for help. Sure. <laughs> I'll help them maybe, but <laughs> <laughs> if it, if it works out and such, yeah, you mentioned yeah. white labeling. Um, mm -hmm. so kind of for those who are unfamiliar with how you're using that, uh, that for that term in this situation, uh, kind of define that and give us an example of that if you would, please. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is probably one of the most asked about questions. I'd say top five for sure. Um, white labeling is, you know, let's say for example, I'll give you two examples. One example is maybe you only have one photo booth, but you have a client that you work with quite a bit and they want to book your photo booth for their Christmas party. You don't want to say no to them. You don't want to give that client away to somebody else uh, because it's a reoccurring client for you, but you don't have a photo booth. In that case, that's when I would reach out to somebody else and say, listen, I have a client. I need you to do this job for me. Um, are you available? That kind of thing. And then we work out an agreement and a lot of people are going to ask like, well, oh, what's the agreement? Depending on the scope of work, let's say it's a very basic photo booth job, just template, you know, custom template, unlimited prints, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, in that case, I would do all the design work. I do all the communication with the client. And then I essentially treat that white label company as an em employee or contractor, right? Where sure. I send them all the information. Um, they set up the booth. They run the event. But I would keep about anywhere between 25 and 30% of the cut. And then I would give them about 75 to 70% yeah, of yeah. the amount. And people might think like, well, that's not a really great way of making money it's not necessarily meant to be there to make you money, right? It's, it's meant to help you keep that client. It's mm -hmm. there to help you continue your business or even grow it. If you get two or three of these where you have to white label out, it might be time for you to buy another photo booth, right? Or expand that business. Certainly. Um, another example is we have quite a few clients that will do events across Canada for us. We have five different locations that we can operate from directly. And then uh, anything else we need to send it out to someone and see in this case, these are generally very custom jobs. So we will make our money on the customization. So upselling um, designs or vinyl wraps or any type of microsite or uh, live gallery, that kind of stuff. And then the actual event itself, we will outsource that to somebody who's local. Um, and in a lot of times like the pricing structures might be a bit different. In that case, if they're just doing like the print portion of it, then we would make a little bit more money on that side just because of the customization that we're keeping in office, the administrative side of things, and then just paying out essentially the labor cost of it. So it really does help you build your your business and also will help you expand into um, bigger contracts where you may not have somebody in that area to mm -hmm. work that event, but you can find someone who you can trust to at least represent you. Yeah, good. Yeah, that's that's. What I was hoping, uh, what you were, where you were going to head with that, and give us some good examples with that. So, um, you mentioned subcontractors. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if the rules are a little bit different, but uh, you know with the, what we have to do here in the United States when it comes to subcontractor and the employee thing, we've I've done a couple of videos on that. How uh, does it work with a in your situation with a photo booth company? Are you able to these other companies? Are they can they be subcontractors all the time, or does it get to the, this fine line where all of a sudden they become employees according to the government? Uh, yeah, that is a very <laughs> complicated question. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I've looked at it a couple of ways. The way that we work with our subcontractors, like we essentially send out the contracts to the pool that we have, and they can either accept or decline it, which allows us to have some contract staff. And then we all we have full time employees as well. Mm -hmm. um, 
in terms of contracting out to another company, um, as far as I know, and now you're going to make me go and talk to my accountant and lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we need, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure when I hire another company, because yeah. I'm just hiring them. Yeah, exactly. Essentially, the do a photo booth job, right? I'm not. They're not. A, they're not essentially. They're just under contract with me to call themselves modern instead of whoever they are. Certainly, yeah, and that's, <laughs> but that's, I am going to look into that now because. And that's yeah. That's a gray. <laughs> As you said, that was a gray area here in the States also, and it kind of follows along the same situation as if they're another company and most of their money is being derived from a different business or different income sources, i.e. not from me, then it would be a white label subcontractor mm -hmm. situation. So, yeah. Okay. So it's just as convoluted and messy in yep. Canada as yep. it is here. Um, so I want to want to go back. You mentioned uh, you guys are celebrating your just celebrating your fifth year into this. What brought you into the photo booth business? <laughs> I love telling this story. Um, <laughs> I was uh, so I worked a corporate job. I worked for an insurance company for fourteen years, but I also did uh, photography. I always wanted to do photography, you know, art stuff and photography has always been a huge part of my life. Uh, I started off doing wedding photography on the side, but I couldn't make money. Like. I was charging thousands of dollars at the end of the day when I factored in editing and shooting and all that other kind of stuff, equipment. You were making less than your wage. Um, so I went to Vegas on no money at all. And um, when I was walking the floor, you know, I went there for inspiration. I wanted to go see like the great photographers and see like how can they do this, right? Um, and I was walking the trade show floor and I saw the Photo Booth Supply Co. booth and they had this beautiful legacy booth which is the one that had the umbrella on it mm -hmm. and i took a picture and i'm like wow this is not a photo booth. like i hated photo booths to be quite honest <laughs> anytime i saw those hats I, all i could think of was like that has lice on it for sure <laughs> like, <laughs> which is awful. disgusting get away yeah i just wanted to have, like take lice all to it um but uh no this booth like i couldn't I couldn't stop thinking about it. I called my husband and I was like, this just clicks. Like, I get it. This is beautiful. Like we can market this. It's something different. Um, I, ch I charged it on my mom's credit card <laughs> and it was my emergency credit card. Keep in mind, I'm like 20, what, 26 or 27. Like I shouldn't have my parents' credit card anymore. Um, but I had 30 days <laughs> to explain or pay it off. Uh, and that was enough. So uh, I, I paid for it. And the rest is kind of history. It, it went off so quickly. We bought our second booth um, within six months and then our third and then our second location and then our third location. And then I quit my job uh, three years into it. And here we are <laughs> five Excellent. years later, full time boothing and a couple of locations and still loving it. Excellent. Excellent. And and now both you and your husband, are you both you both work the, with the company or is he? Uh, I mean, he does work at <laughs> the company, but no, uh, he's, he just really helps out quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but day to day is, is all me. Okay. And obviously my team, it's not just me. I have a big team of amazing people that I couldn't do without that. My staff is really like, I have to say they are top, top people. And, and I love working with them every day. Yeah, and the reason I ask that question is because sometimes you know, little tips with working with one spouse on a business, a small business can be, it can be a great thing, and sometimes it can be a little stressful thing working with your <laughs> the significant other. So that's why that's why I was kind of wondering about that. It's like, oh yeah, that yeah. that could be something. Yeah, moving I don't from. know if we. I mean, I'm sh we work we work really closely with a lot of stuff, but uh, and he does, like I said, help quite a bit. I don't know if we could do it all day long. <laughs> <laughs> I like my husband. <laughs> exactly. But we also need our space once in a while. Look at that. Well, it's more, you know, I think it's more like the, he's like a, a break for me, right? Like, mm -hmm. it, I feel like I think about photo booths 24 <laughs> 7. Yeah, yeah. So at least I can hang out with him and it's like, I'm not thinking about business anymore. <laughs> We're not talking. We won't be talking shop all night long. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Uh, we got a couple of questions in the chat room here. I've been kind of getting getting into them. Uh, Dave asked a question about uh, with the multiple locations and keeping things organized. Obviously, you're using some tools, and not only just having good people in place, but there's got to be some tools you're using to keep organized with all these things. Yes, um, I am a firm believer of automation. I love systems. Um, 
you know, the only thing I might love more than photo booths is systems. So I actually do have a CRM system. I use Pixify. Uh, there's other ones out there, obviously, like Boothbook, um, Check Cherry, Tave, a lot of different systems that you can use. But uh, I chose to go with Pixify just because it is so broad in what I can do with it. Uh, we manage all of our locations out of that. And a lot of it's automated, you know, lead generation. There's forms in there. There's email, um, all that kind of stuff. We have uh, a lot of Google Docs with our workflows you know everything's documented as much as possible we have a lot of manuals and so we try to make sure that everything is the same in every location and every time we come up with something new we try to document it which is very hard to do and it's time consuming uh, but it's so necessary um, th the more you grow the more information you have to have because training people takes a lot and you forget right yeah. I had to do a quote for the first time and I don't know how long myself today and I had to sit there and go like uh <laughs> wait a minute <laughs> how do I do this again <laughs> so I you know look back on our manual and I'm like right okay here we go um yeah <laughs> so manuals are super important and and you know I think people are intimidated by it but every time you do something just write it down like if you're sending an email and you know how you want to structure it like write that down somewhere like how to reply to a client you know use this tone um structure it like hello uh information here's your quote and goodbye you know mm -hmm. it's that simple and if you do it in baby steps it won't seem as large and one day you'll start off with two or three pages and next thing you know you'll have 400. Now, this little part of our talk is going, this will become a seminar that she'll be giving on how to become, how to add staff to your photo booth business. You yeah, just, you, I mean, you, sure. I, I could definitely talk <laughs> exactly. about that. Too. You just did a wonderful job. It's like I'm creating a job description for the person I want to hire to do all these things. <laughs> That's exactly Oh, yeah. My job descriptions generally end up as uh, point form notes, like who is this person? And I write down everything I want them to do. And then I have to translate that. Sometimes I just post them like that. You need to do Photoshop tick, for tick, three tick, hours tick, a day. Tick, tick. <laughs> and if you can go and check most of them off, we'll think about hiring. Uh, exactly. Funny, funny. <laughs> Um, you had mentioned earlier when you were talking about the different locations and, and such that you guys do wraps and, and different, more creative things uh, with your show. So obviously you are, your photo booth company is kind of focusing on those higher end events. Um, what, um, what, what's, you know, kind of took you that direction as opposed to maybe kind of being in the more the middle of the market? Uh, I have... <sighs> So I never say no. I really find that the only way that you can get out of your comfort zone is being challenged and um, feeling uncomfortable. I find that the most successful events and crazy stuff that we've done, I've been super stressed about it and uncomfortable. It's, hmm. you know, when it's easy, it's just not going to really challenge you to explore what you can do, right? Um, but I find that the pressure just makes you really think outside the box and think of every other channel you can possibly do to make something really exciting and big and and creative and, and bring people into these activations, right? Because you can make something that's super extravagant, but if it's not going to appeal to people to come and enjoy it, then you kind of haven't really done your job. So um, I think my customers were, were coming to me and saying like, hey, I have a crazy idea and I need this, this, and this, can you do it? And I would say yes, and then panic for like 24 <laughs> hours <laughs> trying to research how the heck could I do it? Like I would obviously know, okay, well, I know that this part can be done because I've seen something similar and this part can be done because I've seen it kind of applied here. Right. And then it was just piecing those pieces together, right? So it's not like I just say yes to everything. It's an educated yes, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the creativity is really the driving force is uh, you like to be that creative person as opposed to, in essence, an order taker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, I think that's what keeps it interesting, right? Um, you know, doing the same thing over and over again isn't really, it's it's repetitive. It's, it's not enjoyable to a certain extent. Um, you need to challenge yourself, right? In order to grow, you need to challenge. And, Certainly. Uh, yeah. It's, I, I think it, that fear and, and, going through those things where you're you're uncertain of the outcome is not only going to help you grow as a person and as a company but you know you, you just learn so much out of it that you can then apply to other stuff and and now I feel like the things that we're saying yes to that some people might think are really crazy for us we're like yeah yeah no problem like we can do that no problem and sometimes our clients are like really like just like that you can just do this super quickly and we're like yeah because we've gone through it at this point but to them it's still mind-blowing yeah, right like something true. as simple as automatically printing a photo that was taken across the room to them is like Whoa. 
Yeah. I was here and it happened over there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So oh, fun, fun. Yeah. I've got a couple more. Yes. I got a couple more questions for you. Uh, before I get to those, though, if you guys are interested in coming and joining us in Las Vegas, February 24th through the 27th, you can go out to pbntv.com slash tickets. That will take you to the portal to buy your show pass, the full show pass. That pass, when before you do that, enter the promo code of PBXSHOW2020. All this information is down in the uh, description below the video here. Enter that in. You're going to get a half price. I think it's a half price ticket. Anyway, the, the tickets as cheap now as it's going to be the rest. It's going to be going up Halloween night, midnight, October 31st. It goes up higher. So get your tickets now. Join us February 24th through the 27th down at the South Point Casino in Las Vegas. Two more questions that I've got, then, unless there's more that jump into the chat room. We're talking about creativity and, and how that's so much ex excitement and fun. Think back to one of the most creative ones that was kind of a challenge that you really, really enjoyed. And could you share a little bit about what that uh, project was like? That would be, uh, I'm curious now after some of <laughs> what you talked about beforehand and such, this could be fun. Yeah, uh, well, I'm kind of actually living it right now. So I can't tell you too much detail, but this is definitely the biggest project we've ever worked on. Um, one of my clients came to me and said, this is really not something that you guys would probably normally do, but humor me. Uh, and so, you know, I asked, you know, well, what are, what are the parameters? He said, nothing. Just what would you do? And I loved it. I had this thing in my head that I'd been thinking about for a really long time. And, you know, I think I spent probably like two days just creating this proposal um, and just putting it all out there. Like literally, this is no hold bar. He just, put it all out there. He just blank slate, do something and go. Yeah. And I, I even priced it out and I was like, there's no way, <laughs> you know, like there's just no way. And they, they loved it. And so that's when it, you know, we started going through making this come to life. And uh, it's been a lot of long nights and I'm, you know, learned a lot of um, new, I don't know, <laughs> skills, I guess. <laughs> Uh, that I can definitely apply, but it's it's been stressful for sure because it is uh, a really large project, but I'm so excited. Every time we finish another part of it, it's just super exciting. I, I can't wait to like show everyone once it's all done. Um, so keep an eye on that if, if you're interested to find out on our Instagram account. It's at Modern Photo Booth, which is no vowels, mdrnphotoboothcompany.com. And you'll kind of see all the crazy stuff that we're we're up to because like I said we no day is the same yesterday we were throwing chicken feathers at each other so <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're you're thinking the hats are gross because there might be lice but you're throwing chicken feathers that could be <laughs> hey they were in an Ikea pillowcase so <laughs> I'm sure they're clean um uh, it's, it's actually, a great question Dave uh, Dave threw out the question um, what's one of the biggest challenges right now in the photo booth industry oh I mean, there's there's quite a few. I think it's with any industry, right? There's there's challenges. Um, I think educating the consumer is probably one of the biggest things that people go through just in general and being able to communicate our worth to people. I think we forget easily that we are professionals and what we do from day to day is not simple, even though it looks simple, right? Taking a picture, putting an overlay on it, printing it like something as a, a, as basic as that kind of mm -hmm. photo booth to us is so easy um, to the general public. It's not so valuing ourselves and our service and charging accordingly is I think the biggest challenge that we have. There's a lot of people that um, just sell the service in order to just make a couple of quick bucks here and there. And it devalues, unfortunately, the entire industry uh, and people start to believe that they're not worth the money, but you are you know, what you have in your head and what you know, what you can do with your equipment is very, very um, valuable information and you need to charge for it. And that, that was actually Raymond just came up with a question that you kind of were hitting on that where he's talking about, you know, all the 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 um, the time of, of the prep of the putting everything together and then getting paid for that. Because sometimes mm -hmm. people will look at and say, well, you're charging X and they're charging, you know, half of X and you're the same, aren't you? And I'm, and I'm sure that that's not just what I see in this area. 
No, and that, I mean, that's the same everywhere. I mean, it's not like I've never had a client be like, well, so-and-so is going to do it for like $500 less. And to be honest, I'll tell them and be like, I, I can't beat that price. Mm -hmm. If you're going to come to me on price, I'm not, I'm not your photo booth company, you know? And then I go into a spiel about why we charge what we charge. But um, some people are just price driven and you need to understand very early on that if they are price driven, that's just not your customer. And they need to go with that budget person. And if that budget person can sustain themselves for a long duration of time, because maybe they actually don't care about making profit and they're just trying to make petty cash type of thing, right. um, then great, let them do their thing. They're never going to exceed what they are at this point, you know, because they won't be able to. They won't have cash flow eventually. It'll just cease to exist. Um, but, you know, just keeping yourself and remembering that because it is hard to walk away from someone who's about to give you money, even if it is $500 less than what you asked for. But they come back because once that other company does a really bad job or doesn't show up or ceases to exist, they come back to someone who they know has been steadily in the industry and delivering a consistent product over and over again. So just keep to it. I know it hurts to watch them walk away, but let them walk away sometimes. <laughs> you mentioned, of course, that price person. There, there are times, though, that that price person may not know enough or know the right questions to ask, and they jump you know, to price right away. How do you uh, evaluate quickly, fairly quick, you know, in those, those first moments of the conversation to know if they're that price person that needs to go you know, just to let them go away or someone that just doesn't know and you can take them through you know, the value of what you do? Uh, well, the first thing we always do with anyone who comes in, whether they talk to us about price or not, we treat all of our leads the same. We pick up the phone and we call them because they might not know, like you said, the value of having a photo booth. And everyone has a different goal to have a photo booth or a photo activation or video activation at their event. Some people want it just for fun. Some people want it to collect emails. Some people want it to attract people to their trade show booth. You know, like there's all different types of goals and you can't market to those people properly unless you know what their goal is. So picking up the phone, talking to them about their event and finding out what their pain points are and how you can address those is how you get money from people. Because if you just say, here's a photo booth, it's $1,500. They're going to be like, huh? But if you say like, here's this photo booth, it's going to like, collect all these emails for you. We're even going to do your first um, like uh, consent. People were going to consent to allow you to communicate with them. You know, you're going to take a picture. You're going to print it to them. They're going to, it's going to be branded. You're going to have your branding on it, collecting emails. People are going to come to your trade show booth. Like you're showing value for your service. Now you're charging them $1,500 to be a lead generator. You're right. not charging them $1,500 to be a photo booth. Right. So it's, it's understanding your clients. If you understand what they need, you can charge accordingly. So in, in many of those cases, when you're working with corporate clients, you are selling them a marketing tool over a yep. photo booth, really. And it just so happens that marketing tool involves a photo booth, but you're selling exactly. them, that benefit and they jump on it. Excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, great. Uh, they, Nicholas says it's, it feels great to say no sometimes. Um, <laughs> Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, I think uh, we need to we'll go to our last question. Um, if you could look into the crystal ball and look to the next two to five years in the photo booth industry, what do you think is going to be the thing that's going to keep photo boothers alive in this industry and thriving? Uh, I see a really interesting shift. There's two things that I mean will always happen. The old becomes new again. So, you know, enclosed booths used to be like the no thing, you know, and like when the open air booths came out. And I think we're going to see a lot of enclosed booths coming back. And that's mm -hmm. going to be kind of like the retro thing, but more of the like wooden, bigger kind of photo booths. Um, but then the other direction is kind of the more futuristic stuff. I, I see a big shift in video. Uh, lighting is going to be a big thing, you know, bringing in, and we see that with some of the big wigs, the Emmys and uh, the Met Gala, all that kind of stuff. They're using lighting effects and different types of LEDs and all that kind of stuff. So I really see um, video and lighting being the future and then bringing back kind of like that retro enclosed booth is, is going to be another big thing coming out. But mostly it's going to be about experiences. It's not so much about the product anymore. It's all about what kind of experience you can build for people and to attract them into to come and experience it. Yeah, I think that, that's a great, great uh, thought there. The experience seems to be kind of a common thread I've been hearing from many people as we look into the future because people will pay for experiences. They yes. won't pay <laughs> for other things. So Definitely. 
Great, great chat, uh, Catalina. Thank you for being on, and thank you guys for watching. We had, I think we, we topped out at about 84 uh, that I was just counting th 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 down with all the different channels. So a nice crowd tonight. And if you guys uh, liked liked the videos, please you know give it a like on them, wherever that is down below. It's probably down in that lower corner, which actually would be down in that corner. I'm trying to do <laughs> trying trying. everything's backwards. So in one of the corners, go, you got, go get a like. Uh, Catalina uh, will be speaking at Photo Booth Expo on Monday and Tuesday afternoons around that two o'clock time frame. And of course, the full schedule will be out here and you guys can check that out as we get closer to the show. Once again, Catalina, thank you for being on tonight. Thank you so much. Okay, we'll get, catch you guys later. Good night, everybody. Bye.